Imagine falling into a dead sleep in your hotel, only to be awakened by someone in your room, a presence that has no place being there. Then I just came in one hour, when I come back it was the night, then I just sleep because I was tired. Then when I wake up, I was just feeling there, you know, and I thought maybe someone is knocking. When I just wake up, I just I heard the, the water falling in the toilet. Then when I check, I just see the steam, but it's like someone is inside, but I, I can't see. It's like someone was bathing and or using the toilet. I went out and called the, the security. I was running and screaming, told the security that there's, some, there's someone in my room. I don't know how the, she or he entered because I was sleeping, but I hear the knock. It's just only... This is Lindiwe. It's not her real name. But her experience is as real to her as the bed she was sitting on as she told her story. When they come, they found the, the, the steam, the glass was... It's like someone is inside, still bathing. Even them, even the, the security, even those ladies, they were scared. Truly speaking, they were scared. And one time, the, that, that other guy, the security, the one I know long time but he, he's already gone now he even told me that there was one person who was sleeping here before and even that person come and run they said there's someone in the room Lindywe has spent many nights in Pretoria's Victoria Hotel but that one night left her convinced that she had had a paranormal experience but I think there's a spirit coming around, maybe it's called a season because that person, it's, it's a chosen room, it's not all of the rooms. The way my body was reacting, it was the first time that I felt like there's something, there's a spirit that I don't know, like I was feeling otherwise. Shivers, hearing voices, an inability to move, and a deep, inexplicable sense of disquiet. They're the classic signs we associate with the haunting. They're also, of course, classic symptoms of something a little more mundane sleep paralysis that's how skeptics often explain what people perceive as a brush with the spirit from beyond the victoria hotel is the oldest hotel in pretoria built in 1884 it still has a lot of the features of the time stained glass windows whose colors have lost their initial luster Corridors still carpeted in places with the original rugs from the trains of the 1800s when the hotel was still a frontier town rest stop. In its heyday, the gracious old building was quite the place to be. A rest stop for visitors and for the thousands that came to the Rand to make their fortune or lose it as the gold rush really took hold. It was a bit of comfort in a frontier town that was rough and tumble at best and downright dangerous at worst. Now it's like the weird intersection of two universes. On the wall is a depiction of men in pith helmets and safari suits having a drink right beneath an ATM and a soft drink vending machine. Their cabinets filled with vintage cameras and even a dust-covered aviator inside of the doorway that opens onto a now bustling African city street. It's a little faded, an echo of a lost time with a reputation that extends beyond its period architecture. Lindiwe's story, as it turns out, is not unique. There is story upon story of apparitions, disembodied voices, and weird creaks and cracks. Standing on the century-old staircase, you're surrounded by framed fading pictures of nameless Victorian women. It's not hard to believe if you're that way inclined that the Victoria Hotel is haunted. Old venue like like the Victoria Hotel, you know, it's been there since almost the start of Pretoria, you know, and uh, there's definitely a lot of energy that's run through Pretoria and especially through that hotel, you know, you get you know, some of the rich, richest people staying in that hotel, you know, making the money from, from the gold mines and the diamond mines, so I do, I do believe that there should be some activity, but we'll definitely have to investigate to see if it's you know, the rumors are true. Meet Venant Fancel, an investigator and the marketing manager of Phoenix Paranormal South Africa, 
a company that looks into unexplained and inexplicable mystical occurrences. Yes, that's an actual thing. It's a legit business, albeit a side gig for Fansel, who spends his eight to five time as a debtor's administrator. He's pretty nondescript, really, except for his piercing blue-green eyes. He's well acquainted with the stories of the Victoria Hotel and believes there's something to them. He even puts a name to a ghost he believes wanders the halls. The only ghost I know of in Victoria, Victoria Hotel, is um, Alfie. He used to used to work there. He was one of the employees, from as if the stories can believe, be believed. So he basically just walks up and down the corridors, opens taps, shuts doors, opens doors. So it's a it's a lot lot of uh, poltergeist activity that you can't get there. When staff members hear of Lindy's story, they weren't surprised at all. One in particular, barman Olaleka and Salusi, had some stories of his own to share. He's worked behind the old heavy wooden bar for 10 years now and recalled one instance early one morning after his late shift. Because there was a day I was working there by the bar. It was around past 10, past 10 in the night. Then I had some some noise by the kitchen. So I was surprised, like someone is washing the plates, arranging the cups, and we are only two here, me and the, the man working by the reception. So uh, at, at first I was thinking it was him. So I went and I saw him, he was there by his post. So I asked him, are you not the one making, washing the dishes? I said, no, I'm here, I didn't go anywhere. Then the sun stopped for a while, then I went back to my post. Then after some seconds, I hear like someone open the water, washing the dishes again. I was scared, man. I went inside the kitchen. When I got there, everything was fine. The plate was well arranged. Everything was fine. At first, I was a little bit scared, but frightened. But when I opened the door, I see there's no one there. Then I saw traces of water, you see, soap, like someone is making washing dishes on the kitchen, the what, cabinet. So I came out back, now I run to that guy, I said, you know, somebody's there watching the chimney, it's a ghost. So I went back, I was a little bit scared, because I knew before that stories of ghosts here. Then there was the battle of the remote control. Our control for the, the, the DSTV used to be up here by the roof. So at times when there's a soccer, you know, when there's a soccer game, Chief is playing by rage. I have to go there, change to Super Sport 4. So I changed to Super Sport 4. Before I could get down again, it was on a talk radio. So I asked the ladies there, who is changing my decoder? They said, no, nobody went upstairs. You went upstairs. No, I said, no. I went upstairs, but I changed it now. I said, no, go back there and say again. I went back there, it was on talk radio. So I changed the game to Super Sport 4. I came down again. And there was this day, there's a customer said, maybe it happens this side of the room, or Kruger, Kruger 1, Kruger 2. No, the room is this side of the wing of the hotel. When the customer, they sleep, they hear some like, white people are talking. You understand? So white guys, many happens, you know, there's a staircase here upstairs, that white people are talking, someone is running up the stairs. You know, like uh, they speak Africans, you know, sort of things. And as there was a lady one they said it was she wanted to bat. So she came down to I don't know, to buy a time or something. But time she got up, she saw by the shower this thing, that's like it means like someone opened the water. You see, and the lady was surprised. <laughs> Nobody can get access to the room. Why someone you see a lot of stories like that. At night when you open that door, you ask some strange feelings. You see, your temperature room is, I don't know how to explain it. See, like, like, like somebody is chasing you. Then you wanted to open the gate quickly and get inside. And you are struggling with the key, you see. Sort of that kind of feeling. You see, when you are being chased, you are walking alone in the night. You see, like somebody is coming behind you. Then you wanted to run inside the room. So when you wanted to open the door, you were busy looking forward and back that who is coming, you see. 
it's the nature of life as a bartender that people talk to you. And over the years, he's heard countless tales from guests about weird feelings that come out of the blue, strange prickles on their skin that feel like getting caught in a cold draft, a lingering unease in some of the quieter, dark places of the hotel. And then there are the more concrete examples that are just plain spooky. And this guy also, the guy I was working with before told me one day he was sitting down there as like somebody tapping. Like somebody just walked past him and tapped him by the shoulder. Yeah. And he looked back, he didn't see anybody. So when he was there again, he said, no, where's my coffee? He heard this sound, like somebody's talking by the corner, where's my coffee? So in the night, the guy, when he came to work, he used to make coffee, like two coffee. One for himself and one he just put it there in case somebody is asking for coffee again. It's a lot of stories. Despite the hotel's reputation for spookiness and haunting, it doesn't seem to be scaring off its guests or staff, but rather leering those who seek truth in the hotel's urban legends. It is not harmful. The ghosts are not harmful. They do their own thing. They don't scare people. But when you you at the point in time maybe when you they just want you to know that no we are still here you understand no the spirit are still here but we don't harm people we don't chase people we don't scare people enjoy yourself but we want you to know that spirit are still here so, no they're from the old time according to the stories they're according from the old time that those people used to stay here you know, those people maybe they're part of those people they built this place you see, those people, they stay here. You see, for a long time, the spirits are still here. And when you think the spirits want to stay? No, it's, you know, in life, you know, I don't know, maybe. But according to books that I've read, stories, TV programs, when somebody dedicated his life on something, the spirit won't go away from that thing. He might be dead, but the spirit is still around. You understand? If there are spirits here, they're pretty chilled. Just hanging out and washing dishes, demanding coffee and listening to the radio. If they exist and are indeed the souls of those who stayed, lived and worked at the Victoria Hotel, they're probably pretty fancy. More likely to steal your whiskey or use your shower than push you down the stairs or suck you into a television. Of course, it's quite possible that people who claim to have brushes with these ghosts were just, well, the victims of an old building, creaky pipes, strange drafts, dark little spaces, or, as so many skeptics believe, in the throes of a bad bout of sleep paralysis, with the heavy weight you think you feel on your chest and the creepy whispers you seem to hear, nothing more than a trick of your brain. One way or another, the Victoria Hotel is a trove of history and stories, a time capsule of sort, and place to wonder, could it be? Join us again next time for more tales of the unexplained as we go inside the Breitenbach Theatre. This episode of Haunted was produced by Abigail Javier and Ahmed Kaji. It was narrated by Ayanda Nyati and edited by Peter Turon. To get a sneak peek of these ghostly places, visit ewn.co.za forward slash haunted.